fountain pens. For some, they're a classy way to draw and write. But for me, they were a mystery. I'm Detective Dan Draw, and I've been working to uncover the story of pens. With each new clue, I came closer to cracking the case. But there was something different about this one. What's the secret of fountain pens? I needed answers from someone I could trust. What do you think, Professor? Well, Detective Dan, from outward appearances, the fountain pen looks just like all the other pens. Let's hook it up to the detectoscope and have a look. Floyd, can you give me a hand? Meep, meep. Look at the fountain pen. Meep, meep. There's something inside it. Nothing says style and sophistication quite like a fountain pen. Just drawing or writing with one elevates your work beyond the ordinary. They bring a flowing, liquid line to whatever you're creating. Greetings. While not used as much as other writing instruments, fountain pens have been making a comeback. They're used by writers and artists and calligraphers all over the world. Some are made of precious materials and are quite expensive. Others are much more practical. Yet it's not what's on the outside that makes a fountain pen special or different from all the other pens that came before. Join us for Art Expedition as we uncover the story of fountain pens and discover that without them, most of the pens we use today wouldn't exist. By the mid 1800s, most people had switched from writing with quills, to metal dip pens. Thanks to advances brought on by the Industrial Revolution, these pens were strong, inexpensive, and available. With the growth of public education and the accessibility of dip pens, more people were writing than ever before. But like the quill, and earlier the reed pen, metal pens required dipping in a bottle of ink. No sooner do you start writing, than you run out of ink and have to dip again, and again, and again. This repeated back and forth from bottle to page meant that the paper was in constant danger of being spilled on and spattered. Oops. Traveling and using a pen and ink on the go just wasn't practical. If only there was a way to combine the bottle of ink with the pen in its holder. A pen that would have a continuous flow of ink like water from a fountain. A fountain pen. The desire for this kind of pen goes back centuries. While we don't really know who created the first fountain pen or when it was made, we have clues that they were around long before the 1800s. There are accounts going back to the 10th century AD in Egypt of a judge during the Fatimid dynasty requesting a pen that would not stain his hands or his clothes. He was given a pen with an internal ink supply. What it looked like or how it worked, we don't know. There are some who claim Leonardo da Vinci's notebooks reveal early fountain pen designs dating back to the 1500s. Whether these reports are true or not, by the 1600s, accounts of pens with internal ink supplies began to appear. In 1636, German inventor Daniel Schwenter described a pen made with two quills, one for storing ink inside the other. In 1663, English naval officer Samuel Pepys writes in his diary of a silver pen that carries ink. By the early 1700s, the term fountain pen begins showing up in various documents. In 1709, Nicholas Bion mentions a plume sans fin, the endless pen, in his book about mathematical instruments. Yet fountain pens at this time were rare. They were handmade and still needed refinement. By the early 1800s, the Industrial Revolution had made the metal dip pen big business. With a growing number of people writing, there was an opportunity for anyone who could create a good fountain pen. Their pen would need an ink supply, a nib to mark the paper, and a feed to get the ink from the supply to the nib. But that person would need to solve some problems. How do you control the ink flow to the nib so that just the right amount comes out when you need it? Gravity, air pressure, and clogging were issues. How do you get the ink in the reservoir and refill it when it ran out? How do you keep it from leaking? There were some who were willing to try. In 
In 1809, Frederick Folch received the first patent in England for a fountain pen, followed later that same year by a design by Joseph Brema. A Romanian inventor, Petrar Poianaro, creates a fountain pen in 1827. It's commemorated in a Romanian stamp. Soon, more inventors were working to make better fountain pens. They sent their pen designs to the government to be patented. This made their ideas officially theirs. Not all their ideas were successful, but improvements were made. New inks were created that didn't clog and were less corrosive. New nibs were developed that made writing smoother. Some nibs were made using gold to further reduce corrosion and increase flexibility. Iridium, a platinum group metal, was added to provide strength. New methods for filling fountain pens were also introduced. These included eyedroppers, pistons, and sometimes reservoirs made with either pig's bladders or later rubber. In 1884, Lewis Edson Waterman patented a pen design that used channels to create capillary action, similar to the way trees absorb water. This dramatically improved ink flow. George S. Parker patented his Lucky Curve pen in 1894. His swooped feed design sent ink back into the barrel after use to prevent leaks. William Purvis advanced the fountain pen with his design, patented in 1890. His feed used an elastic tube that regulated the flow of ink. As the 20th century quickly approached, fountain pens were rapidly improving. People began to buy these newfangled contraptions. New companies, as well as some older dip pen manufacturers, began to make and sell fountain pens. Soon, people all over the world were introduced to this new writing instrument. Writing could be done in places never thought possible before. People finally had pens that could travel and be used away from the ink bottle. These manufacturers created fountain pens that were not only practical, but stylish as well. Print advertising promoted the fountain pen far beyond utility to an item that reflected elegance and aspiration. Owning one meant that you were going places in life. Fountain pens became treasured gifts given to students and young professionals. As sales increased, manufacturers grew. While the dip pen was still being used as an inexpensive alternative, the demand for fountain pens continued to grow throughout the first half of the 20th century. Then, the ballpoint pen was introduced. As this new writing instrument surged in popularity, the fountain pen began to fade into the past. But unlike the quill, the fountain pen has been making a comeback. It started with collectors, drawn to the unique classic styles of long ago. Pen manufacturers took notice and began to create new designs. Soon, a new generation of people began to experience the uniqueness of writing with a fountain pen for themselves. So what about fountain pens today? Most modern fountain pens use ink cartridges, introduced in 1953. Some come with converters that allow the pen to be filled from a bottle of ink. Fountain pen inks come in a wide variety of colors. Fountain pen nibs come in different styles for different needs and preferences. While gold and iridium nibs are still being used and sought after, Advances in stainless steel have made these nibs fine choices as well. Today, while there are other options to write and draw with, the smooth flow of a fountain pen is hard to beat. When we use a pen today, we don't really think about where the ink comes from. We don't worry about spilling or making a mess for the most part. Our thoughts are able to flow from mind to hand to paper. But that wasn't always the case. Thanks to the many people who worked to improve the fountain pen, Pens of all kinds allow us to draw or write wherever we want. That's pretty amazing. The fountain pen has made its mark on the pages of history, and they've been written with style. So that's the secret of fountain pens. Thanks so much, Professor. No problem. You too, Floyd. Wait, Floyd, don't touch that button. What is that? It looks like something from the future. The future? Meep, meep. And with that, the next chapter was about to begin.